Yo guys, welcome back to the Beta Podcast. We are on episode 8 and today we have another special guest in the house. We're sticking with the narrative of South African and Bafana Bafana legends and today we have somebody who's in among the top 10 goal scorers in South African football history, a two-time Danish league champion, a two-time Danish cup winner, the Scandinavian Royal League winner. He played in the Bundesliga, the UEFA Cup, the UEFA Champions League. African Warriors, Orlando Pirates, Armenia Bellafield, Mamelodi Sundowns, Neuschland, Vasco da Gama, and Supersport United. By now, you'll probably already know who it is, but it's none other than Sibu Siso Ri Zuma. <laughs> Welcome to the Better Pod, and thanks for coming out today. Thanks for having me, man. Look, um, immediately, I just want to ask you, it's been like 10 years since you've retired from football, um, and many people... You know, I've been asking, you're not the most active on social media and things like that. So many people are asking, why you've not been in the South African coaching scene? Um, is there any reason for that? Or has life just been too busy for you as a football legend? <laughs> yeah, not really. You know, um, I think for all of us, man, um, I've spoken to a lot of um, retired players. Yeah. You know, one thing we do uh, immediately after retiring, we focus more on uh, on the kids because yeah. while you're playing, you don't get to spend time with your family. So mm-hmm. the first step is always, you know, uh, we get excited about taking kids to school, uh, picking them back mm. from school, you know, being involved from their school activities and stuff. Um, so I've been busy with that um, while I'm building my company as well and okay. uh, and the legacy. Um, I have a Spusi Sozuma Foundation. Um, I have um, an academy here in uh, in Sentin. Um, I'm the Bundesliga ambassador in um, with, uh, with with JJ or coach. Mm-hmm. Um, I see he's in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm in the Legends Club mm. with FC Copenhagen. So on a monthly basis, I'm in, I'm in Denmark for the Champions League games, okay. uh, fan activities and stuff like that. So okay. I do keep busy, but um, yeah, with my coaching, um, my coaching badges, um, it's something that um, I'm going to start soon. But my focus was uh, making sure that everything that I need is in place, especially the academy for me was important because oh. um, I think it's important to try and um, uh, and have these young boys somehow uh, just give them the platform, you know, uh, uh, give them that window from uh, the guys in Europe because I think for, for, for the few years, uh, the scouting has shifted more to places like Czech Republic, France, you know. Um, so we need to try and bring them back, you know, to Africa, you know. Mm-hmm. So we, I guarantee you, we have the talent, um, but the focus the focus is not on us for now. So we need to change that. Yeah, just, so, yeah. just to give an insight, uh, it's called the Re- Reloaded Academy, right? Reloaded Academy. And then what, what is the focus on? Is it uh, under sevens, under fifteens? Like what is the focus No, on? we, uh, because I took over the, 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 the school team uh, at Sundown. So mm-hmm. we started with uh, the under nineteens and the other uh, under thirteens. Okay. But um, the plan is to have all the age groups. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my second question was like leading towards something that you already said. Um, when we last spoke, uh, I can't remember exactly where it was. You said you wanted to do your badges, uh, specifically your wafer badges, either in Denmark or in uh, Germany. Um, is that still part of a very, uh, you know? Yeah, that's plan? still yeah, that's still part of it. Um, we um, we're gonna have um, a Zoom meeting with FC Copenhagen. I think mm. Friday. Um, we are trying to make this academy thing work because uh, we 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 want to be one of their satellites in 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 Africa. Mm. Um, I want to do the scouting for them as well in in Africa. So once the whole thing is done, then we move uh, to coaching. Okay, so okay, the badges is just to help you with your scouting, or is this still a coaching thing in your mind? Um, I just. I just want to have the badges, you okay. know, just in case I, I at some stage I want to coach. But uh, coaching was uh, 
was never something that I wanted to do. Um, I um, I rather focus more on developing the young talent, you know, making mm. sure that Bafana Bafana gets, you know, quality players. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's obviously opening up a, a gap or a path that you didn't have. You know, yeah. you had to work for that. Yeah. So it's a good, interesting. I mean, going back to your career, in the start of it, I think you debuted around 18, 19 African Warriors. Um, you spent five seasons in the PSL and you scored like then close to 70, 80 goals. Um, so obviously you were one of the most prolific strikers in the country at the time. How did you achieve that you know, success because there's not many, even to this day, there's not many, you know, teenage strikers coming through and playing regularly and scoring goals, never mind scoring goals for Orlando Pirates at that rate. So um, my question is like, how, how did you do that at that young age? Um, I always tell my, uh, my players that I had some sort of an advantage mm -hmm. because my father uh, used to own a, um, a football club okay so i was raised around a lot of um, a lot of football players they used to live at my house mm -hmm. um on daily basis okay. we'll have four guys living with us seniors uh, seniors yeah okay. so um i think from the age of 12 yeah uh, I was already attending their team meetings, you Training. know, uh, the starting lineup, the formation they're going to play, you know. So I started, uh, I started watching all these things and learning and learning. I was, I was really a student of the game because mm. growing up, I used to watch a lot of Italian football and German football. Okay. Um, and I, I, it's like I always knew that I, I, I really want to play overseas. And that was, for me, my journey starting, you know, um, I really sat down with my father. Mm. I told him, I said, listen, uh, you need to help me. I want to play overseas. So you were picturing that already? I that? was, yeah, because that's how you do it, man. Mm. You have to, you have to see, yeah, you have yeah. to see yourself competing that side. You have to see yourself playing in the Champions League. And then um, you just... You know, he pointed me to the right direction. He said, okay, then you need to change the way you train. So I started very young. Mm. Um, every day, I wake up five in the morning. I run about 20K. Mm. Uh, I made sure that I joined the gym very, very early. That's that, that's what it, it takes. As a teenager. It's, it's hours you put in. Mm. Okay. There's no way around that. It's hours you put in. Mm -hmm. You see that running 20K in the morning, uh, making sure that I'm doing my finishing. I was I was raised in football as a midfielder. I used to play number six, uh, central midfielder. Okay. I used to play as a goalkeeper. Um, I used to play as a sweeper. So once you play all those positions, as a striker, you can see the whole pitch you understand and the it. picture. You understand the pass. Like you remember when uh, when Rooney played the season that Rooney played with uh, Van Persie. Yes. I remember how he was passing Van Persie. Yeah, he was playing video. He had a lot of yeah. assists, yeah. Yeah. Because once you understand uh, those positions, how to pass the ball, how to mm. receive, it's easier for you to see the pass early. Yeah. So I had advantages like that, you know, that I was a student of the game and I had a lot of people around me that were just teaching me. Uh, that's why from, from high school, to African Wanderers where I score a lot of goals. Mm. A season later, um, I'm top goal scorer for Orlando Pirates. Mm. You know, you, it, it, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I heard, I'm not sure if it's true, that you didn't like get a lot of support from your father. Like he didn't, you know, say, oh, you're going to be that UEFA Champions League player. Is that something that, if it's true, that spurned you on to say, I'm going to show you? No, 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 it's not, um, it's not true. Mm. Um, I, 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 I've learned a lot from my father because he was a football player. Um, sometimes uh, when I see that at school we're gonna, uh, we're gonna come against a very good school that I'm worried about, I used to speak to him about the formation that we, we, we can use yeah. against this school. So um, I think what I've said in the past, I told um, I think some, some, some newspaper that, uh, my father didn't didn't attend my games okay. growing up, but 
uh, he told me why he was uh, he was not attending my games. So they didn't put that when they were telling the yeah. story. He told me that I'm not going to attend your games because you are not on my level yet. Okay. Once you're on my level, then I will come attend your games. And the first game it? that you watched was the was the final, um, the, the school cup final where I scored a winning goal. Yeah. And then after that game, I was picked by African Wanderers. Mm. So just before I turned professional, then he came to to watch my games. Mm. But it was um, it was part of my journey, man. He was buying me boots. Mm. Uh, he was buying me soccer boots. He was buying me everything I needed. So he was there for me, man. The whole the whole way. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he passed on before you made your debut for Bafana. Yes, uh, the game was Saturday. He passed away on Friday. But be, before he passed away, he told them not to disturb me. They must tell me after the match. So it was an away match? No, no, no. We were playing uh, here in, in uh, FNB. Uh, so Trot was the coach at the time. Yeah. So coach knew on Friday, but they were not allowed to tell me until after the match. So immediately, and uh, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was my first game. Because I remember um, I was playing as a right winger. Cross the ball to Sean. Mm. We won one zero. Um, Can and you remember then I was, who it was? Uh, I think, I think Burkina Faso. Okay. Yeah, I think Burkina Faso. So I had an assist. Mm. Um, I came in as a sub. Had an mm. assist. So after the match, I'm excited. Then the change room. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they call me aside. I said, ah. "My father just passed away." And, and yeah. No and my day just that's heavy yeah that's, that's heavy, that's heavy. It's, heavy. Was he, was he it's, heavy. it's crazy because even uh, even when my mother passed away mm. um i was about to make my uh, my uh, my first match in um, in the bundesliga um but with her she was sick so I, I, not, I yeah not dead was quick so with my mother she was sick for some time and um, I came back um, and while I was in South Africa that's when she passed away and but my mother was tough because uh, uh, I mean everything for me didn't make sense you know even mm. my game dropped mm. uh, luckily the guy uh, that was coaching me in Germany um, he knew me, he was following me for years before he signed me. So he knew that I was a good player. Mm. But I told him, I was like, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I, yeah. I, I can't really play football right yeah. now. Um, two, three, four months, um, I said, OK, go back home, mm. uh, rest, uh, deal with your stuff, and then we'll did Once you see that you are mentally one hundred percent mentally, then you can come back. That's what I did, man. But did it like the passing of your father and your mother like affect your the career you went on to have? Like, uh, not with my father because I knew that he was um, he was happy um, with where I was. Yeah, I mean, uh, the day I told him that uh, I had my first call up because. Mm. For me, uh, special starting mm. from the from the start, everything was about the national team going overseas. Mm. Everything mm. was about the national team and going overseas. And my father knew the plan, so as soon as I got into the national team, he knew that the following step was going overseas. So he was he was really excited. Um. After that, like very good spell, you got into the national team. You went to Denmark and you spent five years there. Um, and it's crazy to think that a five years can have such a big impact. Because we usually, when we speak about legends, we speak about people that stay there, then, you know, yeah. further. So, I mean, you still held as one of their greatest ever players before moving to Germany. Um, you have a statue at um, the stadium for that iconic bicycle kick. The stuff must feel special to you. Of course, of course. Um, I think the timing was just right, you know. Um, when FC Copenhagen signed me, mm. um, they were really 
scrapping to to start winning the league. Um, they were struggling. The, the they were struggling before. the seasons before, but um, that they have signed um, um, really quality players. They signed a guy from Norway, Harald Bradback. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Scotland, um, they have David Nielsen there. They, they, they had quality that year, and um, it was lucky that they found me. But they were prepping to start winning the league because they wanted to take it seriously that year. So um, arriving there and seeing everything, the bosses sitting down with me and said, "Listen, this is the plan. We want to start winning the championship. Um, we've been together for." 10 years we mm. haven't won the league so um hopefully uh, even the excitement when i got there because they started telling everyone to say okay now that we have this guy maybe this is the year yeah, where yeah. we're going to start uh, winning our first championship mm. so of course there was pressure on 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 my side but um oh man i was i was really ready Mm. I was really ready because that side, um, it it is difficult to win the championship. You know, you have the whole city, you know, on your shoulders. Um, I'm not saying that the whole city was on my shoulders because I had a lot of quality, you know, uh, backing me. But I mean, that pressure that um, when uh, when everything is balanced, you have to find the way. Mm. You have to find the way to to make sure the team wins. Um, it's stressful, but um, yeah, they are like kind of the Manchester United of of Denmark. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. They they, they do. They, they they've been dominating men for years, um, and their fan base is growing. You know, mm. um, very quickly. Uh, they are starting to do well in the Champions League. For the past few years now, we've seen them. Yeah, you know, winning games against teams like Man U, Bayern Munich. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, yeah, they're getting them, and they're getting them. Uh, their youth Champions League team was the best. Uh, was was the best team this uh, this past season. So it means they have um, a lot of talent mm. uh, proving them. They've always been very good with 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 youth development. But I mean, just staying on the Danish league, um, since you so well versed on it, even today, um, there's a player we have, the uh, Gift Links. Um, He's closing on 150 games now uh, for AGF. Yeah. Um, he's 25 years old, but he's he's overlooked by the national team. So I just want to ask you, the standard of the Danish league um, and looking at what he's achieving there now, he's a regular, do you think that uh, it's maybe a mistake from the national selectors or the coach? Well, it's, um, it's definitely a mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, because their standard of the game is um, is definitely um, uh, a level higher than ours. Mm. So um, he's been there for, for for a very long time. You know, while I was there, I learned a lot, mm. um, and then I took that back and uh, and help uh, the national team to qualify for uh, a lot of tournaments. I'm sure he wants to do that as well. Yeah. And I've been following him. He works very hard. I've watched uh, some of his games when I'm in Denmark. Um, he brings quality um, every week. So we, we, we need someone who's going to, who's going to be there every time, you know, uh, who's going to give us maybe 95% uh, every time he's, he's called back for Bafana Bafan. Hmm. We, we need uh, guys like him with a lot of experience, the years he's yeah. been there. Um, and definitely we need uh, a lot of our, our PSL players uh, moving. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying Denmark, but anywhere in Europe, you know, it's, uh, it's important. Hmm. It's important for our game. If you look at the the '96 team, uh, the whole team was uh, was playing in Europe, and we were qualifying for everything. Yeah, uh, Afcon, you know. So yeah, it brings me to this point because uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, the CAF president, uh, somebody you called president during your time at Mamelodi Sun, uh, yeah. Doctor Patrice Mutsepe said that we need to have more money in African football to be able to keep players. And I'm, I'm getting to the point now, you were saying 
that you know the big clubs like your Sundowns, your Al Ahlis, your whatever in Africa can compete with your Scandinavian leagues, Sweden, Denmark, um, and so forth with the amount of money that they pay. Yeah. Then I spoke to a very highly prominent agent in South Africa, and he was like quite angry about him putting that out in the media, saying it's a stepping stone league as well. You don't go from the PSL to the EPL like yeah, that. You yeah. don't go to the to La Liga. You go to Scandinavia and then, you know, on yeah. to bigger things. So, do you would you encourage our clubs to be more, you know, realistic about it and say, you know, sell your players for smaller fees and take on the salon fees and and things like that? Do you encourage players to demand those moves to Scandinavia like you did? Well, um, I agree with him, with uh, Mr. Patrice, mm. um, about money. having money. Yeah, that's good uh, for our boys. But um, we, I've been saying this, you know, for years, that we need our boys playing even the small leagues in Europe. Because um, if you look at what happened to me, when I was playing in Denmark, that's uh, that's another an, another level. When I was playing in Denmark, every time I'm called uh, for Bafana Bafana, I would uh, I, I would score a goal or assist, yeah. or sometimes not score. Yeah, uh, play two matches and then maybe I score on the third one. But when I moved uh, from Denmark to Germany, that's another level. Yeah. Um, and that was the reason because I've achieved everything in Denmark. So I needed a challenge. And I told you earlier that I used to watch German football. I was really excited about the way they do things, mm. um, especially the, the work they put in terms of the training there is crazy. That's why a lot of players, I don't go there because the training is really crazy. Fitness but, regime yeah. and stuff. So when I, when, when, I mean, when I started, um, I think I started around end of Jan. Mm. Uh, four months later, we we had a match um, for Bafana Bafana. I scored two. Yeah. And then since then, until I was out of Bafana Bafana, every time I'm called back, I will score a goal. Every time. Because the level is a level higher. And confidence. And confidence. Mm. And another thing is you are playing against quality every weekend. So you have to improve. Mm. Every weekend you are improving. Mm. So to have uh, half of our boys uh, in the EPL, to have um, half of our boys in, in France, uh, mm. Germany, Belgium, makes our national team better. Give us a good, uh, it gives us a good percentage in terms of uh, closing in and winning the AFCON um, with that number. Ne? With, um, let's say, 10 players in France, uh, five in Germany, five in, in, in England. Like a Senegal squad, we, for example. Like a Senegal squad. Mm -hmm. We are already in the semi final of, uh, of, of the AFCON. Yeah. So it's up to us how we perform to win it now. You know, mm. we're definitely going to qualify for the next World Cup. Mm. That's how it works. Yeah. A bit, just to ask you, did you earn more in Europe than you earned, like, let's say, by Sundowns or Super Sport or whatever? No, not, not really. So, not so really. it's right the, in a sense. There was, it was almost, almost the same. Okay. Almost the same. But I, I, uh, I was not there for earnings. Yeah, of course. I was there for an experience and uh, for getting better so I can bring this back to, uh, to, to our national team. That's, mm -hmm. That was the whole idea. It was never about... Money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The 2002 World Cup, it did say, you know, you came back and you helped them qualify for tournaments. I think that was one of the most memorable and forgettable uh, tournaments for South African football. Um, it's maybe one of the best squads we've ever had. Um, yeah. with 13 of the 23 men squad was playing in Europe and for big teams. Uh, do you think that we underachieved with that squad? Because 
I think I, I wrote it down. Uh, okay. The, actually, the, F, the next AFCON squad is yeah. where I wrote down the strikers. But that 2002 World Cup group, do you think you underachieved? Yeah, because we we did. Because that uh, that squad was quality. Yeah. That squad, that squad was quality. And um, I, I, I really thought we, we were going to beat Spain. I mean, the confidence around the guys... Um, a few days before that match, we were reading newspapers that Spain was really worried. Uh -huh. um, and I mean, we, we, we worked so hard, man, just preparing. Um, I believe we're in Japan for, yeah. for like a month or so. Yeah. Just, our training was, uh, was crazy. And, um, and Jay did a very good job in terms of, you know, um, making us relax and not think about the World Cup every day. Um, I think that was another thing that made us to have a, a tournament like that. But by losing that, um, Spain. that Spain match, <sighs> everyone, bro, yeah. everyone was crushed. I remember speaking to Benny and he had tears. Mm. Man. He had tears because we, 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 we all wanted to win that game. Mm. It was very and then close. it went um, from having a good match, uh, having everyone chipping in. I mean, our defenders, Lucas, scored a very nice header. Uh, I mean, if you if you're gonna have your defenders, men chipping in, scoring, um, you have to defend better. Mm. And in the World Cup, there is no room for for mistakes. For, for mistakes, and that's that's what we did, man. Yeah, and we did two huge mistakes. And in 2006, we spoke off air now about yeah. you taking Mbazo's captain's arm back. <laughs> <laughs> in 2006, um, that was probably another low. But Mbazo spoke about it. About he said that the late Ted was not his fan, and they didn't have a good yeah. relationship. But if you look at it, we scored no goals. We came back without a point. Um, Mbazo said it was the coach's fault, perhaps, but I mean, we had you, we had Mpela, Cheese Boy, Pele, Ntleko, and Penny as strikers, and we didn't score a single goal. Yeah. What went wrong there that tournament? Um, I mean, in South Africa, man, they, uh, they love this quick fix. Yeah, yeah. So that was a very good example of that. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we definitely had uh, quality. Mm. On, paper. on paper when you look at our bench you had guys like Teko Simpiwe yeah. Shabalala Tepo we had, Tepo, we had guys like Jimmy Tau and, and all these guys mm. but we've never played with these guys <laughs> me and Penny yeah. uh, we were playing overseas and a couple of other guys mm. so they just decided uh, because uh, Ted was the coach um, and the worst thing they could do was to remove uh, Mbazo from his it was crazy because yeah. um, he said it from, was because he was he wanted to play the FA Cup final. No man, from nowhere they just decided. Uh, I think Ted yeah. thought if he does like you know big changes, yes, yes, yes. it's it's gonna work for 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 the team. But um, and then he said, okay, the players must vote for 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 the new captain. Yes, that's exactly and, um, what he said. The crazy thing is, I didn't even want to be a captain. Everyone voted for me because I was there yeah. for, for for a long time, um, and I knew it was it was a huge mistake. Yeah, you can't be going on a, on a huge tournament like that, you know, changing the uh, your, your your captain. Um, and um, having all these young guys who are playing local uh, local football, mm. and um, I, I I did understand because um, uh, I watched them when they were playing. Teko was really good at, mm. at, at, at Pirates at the time. Uh, Shabalala was 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 quality, you know. Tsepo, these guys were coming through, mm. but there's a way of doing these things, you know. You you can put them in the bench for. For, for for a very good time like they did with us. Mm -hmm. That's why we lasted long in the national team because when we came in, we were in the bench uh, for, 
I think almost a year, mm. if not two years. So just camps, just camps, city, camps. Just camps after yeah. camps. I remember my uh, my first call up when I uh, I met guys like Lucas, mm. uh, Mark Fish for the first time. You know the excitement just seeing these guys. The whole team is playing in Europe. Mm-hmm. You know that excitement. Mm. So even for me. I'm not looking at playing now because I understand what we have here, the quality yeah. and the fact that these guys have been playing together for a very long time. So you can't disturb this. Mm. You can try. You can try, <laughs> but it's, it's not going to work. Yeah, That's yeah. what they did with that team. Yeah, yeah. They thought if we have, if we had guys like Ree and Benny, guys who can score goals, we can just mix them with these young guys and then it's going to work. And it flopped. Yeah. I mean, I just want to know, like, what after that Bundesliga stand, why did you come back to Sundance? It was just one season. You came back to Sundance, didn't do too well, and then you went back to Denmark with Neuschland. That period of your life, what what happened there? Well, Sundowns, um, Sundowns, I just got an injury, um, a very bad one. I uh, did my first operation in, in Germany. So while I was recovering and um, I understood the game is difficult in Germany. You were out of contract when you had that injury? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. I was going to be out in a few months. Yeah. And then it was going to take a lot from me, you know, training wise. And I was getting old, uh-huh. you know. Um, so um, it was like, it, it was sort of a favor, uh, especially from the Rob, uh, Rob's side. Hmm. Yeah, he spoke to Patrice and mm. said, Sibu uh, is recovering, so uh, can I bring him? And uh, Mutsipu was like, I, I, I love him. You can, you can bring him <laughs> and um, we'll, we'll take him anytime. Mm. So I came back. Uh, first few weeks, I do uh, my second operation. Mm. Uh, now I'm in the worst uh, situation. I, I'm, I haven't played for a year, for, for, for a year and a half. And um, I'm back in South Africa. Everyone is excited to see Ari, and I'm getting old. Mm. So, yeah, uh, I decided to speak to Sundown and say, "Listen, guys, um, I'm I'm really struggling fit- fitness wise. Um, there is a guy I know uh, back in Denmark that can work with me, and uh, the World Cup 2010 was coming, and I really wanted to play. Yeah, so." Um, I needed to get back into my top form. good, yeah, good, yeah. good fitness level. Who was the coach? Who was the Sundowns coach at the time? Um, it wasn't it was, Pizzo. No, no, no. It was this uh, French guy. I forgot his name. <laughs> the, the, the short French guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll find out later. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you 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 asked him to go back to Neuschland. Actually, I didn't even speak to the coach. I spoke. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I spoke to the <laughs> to the boss and yeah. said, "Listen." Um, I need to go and work on my fitness levels. And I know one guy in Denmark that can work with me. I went back, mm. trained in Denmark, uh, started scoring goals. Um, I even went a step further. I went to Austria, mm. um, solo camp, just okay. yeah, working with a few guys that side. And when I was fit, I called the national team coach. I said, listen, call I us. want to play this World Cup. Call us. I really call us, yeah. yeah. It was like Azuma, but um, we haven't seen you in a long time. I was this guy. Yeah. I've been scoring goals for you forever. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you're you going to cancel me yeah, yeah. on the biggest World Cup. Uh, so you ain't been at home. Yeah. And I even said, okay, if if you don't bring me back, bring Benny back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, but it didn't happen. Uh, that's football for you. That's our football. So you, uh, that was obviously a, a tough one to take. Then I was, you, I was really angry. I was really, really angry. Entire. I was really angry, man. I, uh, I, I just wanted to retire after mm. that. But then, actually, uh, this is where I think your spark came back because um, uh, I'll never forget that it was 2010 World Cup year. I was in high school, um, and you arrived at Vasco, yeah, after Neuschland. Um, you scored 11 goals that season. You were happy. You were the Khrut man. I was actually playing under 15 at, or under 13 or under 15 at Vasco. Really? Yeah. And I, <laughs> we used to come watch you guys train there. Yeah. You had uh, excellent Walaza. 
Masibusani Zongo, yeah. Moti Pantwa. There was another guy, I think what his name uh, Zeka Kaki. Yeah. Kaul Alex. And he had good players there. And he's, I think that's when you you fell in love with football again, just play. I mean, Paro Park. <laughs> the crazy <laughs> thing is uh, I went there mm. uh, to help them with coaching. Okay. Yeah. Because you uh, came back from Denmark. I came back from Denmark. But how did you end up in Cape Town? No, no, no. Listen to this story. <laughs> Uh, I came back to help them with coaching. You know, Ooh, you know, Rob, specifically. You know, Rob is uh, Rob is from Cape Town. Yes. So they spoke to Rob and say, "What is happening with uh, Sibusiso? It's ambitious. Think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think he can come here? Because they were thought they were thought they they thought I was out of shape and, okay. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So uh, they speak to Rob and said, "Oh no." Um, I'm gonna speak to him and see if he wants to come in, uh, to Cape Town and help you with the Where coaching. Where were you at the time? I think I was in Europe. Okay. I think I was in Denmark. Mm-hmm. So I flew back. Um, uh, went to Cape Town. Uh, first session. Yeah. I decided, okay, I'm gonna bring my boots. I'm gonna train with these guys. But uh, you saw Paro Park coming from Europe and you're seeing Paro Park. Weren't you like? Oh my God! I was like, okay, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is this is not good. Yeah. Yeah. But there was something about that uh, that space, man. You know, the family Park, vibe. Like the family vibe. You know, the fans. Mm. Uh, that uh, that small fan base yeah. they have there. Um, and then the whole squad, man. The guys they were just happy, smiles every mm. day. You know, when they come through a training in the morning. So, and then now the coach decides, no, Sibu, I think you have to play. Yeah. You are still fit, you are scoring, yeah, training, blah, mm. blah, blah. Uh, and then they asked me about the team. They said, okay, we, um, we're we going to have trials for, 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 for these guys. They showed me the list. Uh, what do you think of the players that we have now? Yeah. I told them, I said, don't sign anyone. Uh-huh. This team is perfect. Mm. You have like seriously good players here. I mean, guys like Keenan, uh, Zeka, Cole Alexander. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we had really good players. Um, Johnny. So, yeah. Johnny, oh my God. <laughs> you used to play oh on the left. God. There was left and Johnny on the right. I can't remember who was on top. Um, some guy from Botswana. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Dereng. No, uh, Jerome. Jerome, Jerome. Yeah, Jerome, yeah. Jerome. Dereng was in the midfield. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So that's probably where you fell in love with soccer again. And Super yeah, Sport yeah, came yeah, after yeah. that. Um, that's, um, that's when, because Kevin, um, I think we were halfway, um, in the season. And you were um, f- scoring a lot of goals. I was scoring a lot of goals. Um, Kevin called me and said, listen, uh, we want you for, for next season. I was like, hey, Kevin, now I only train, um, in a week, uh-huh. I only train maybe three days oh, yeah. and then I need the rest. It was like, yeah, we're gonna treat you the same, you know, you, we're going to give you rest. We're going to use you in uh, big games and stuff like that. I was like, ah, okay. That was it. Yeah, that was it. But he trained you too hard then because I saw you were injured a lot after that. No, not <laughs> really. Uh, <laughs> the problem is with me sometimes, you know, mm. I, uh, I, I always want to work hard, you know, um, Take push this gave off me, uh, gave me a lot of, uh, uh, time to rest, you know, mm. but, uh, um, the person that I am, you know, I'm always going to push myself, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But in that squad I mentioned, it was Walaza and Zongo. Yeah. They were yeah, two yeah. of the most ridiculously talented players we've ever seen. Yeah. I think Kamwenda was also there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shucks. He used to, was walk, there he used well, to yeah. train barefoot. He was crazy. Yeah. Uh, why do you think Zongo and Walaza never, never made it? Because you saw them like in training, you'd see what they can do with the ball. Well, it's... Um, it's discipline. Mm. It's discipline. They had, they, they, had, they had all the talent. They were room, roommates, I think. They had all the talent. I, I, I still remember um, Zongo one week um, from Monday uh, up until Thursday. The boy was on fire at training. Mm. I went um, on, on, on Thursday uh, afternoon. I went to the coach and I told him, I said, listen, you have to play. Mm. You can't you can't be doing stuff like this and you don't play. He's, he's gonna lose the confidence. Yeah, yeah. You really have to play, man. I think we're gonna play uh, Newlands. We're gonna play Amazulu. Mm. Um, and then he was on the starting lineup. He won us the game. Mm. 
the boy was quality. Now the problem is, what do you do with your spare time when you are not training? Mm. Did you did you hear the funny stories of of, of him and them to what they caught on at the club? Yeah. Like I mean, I think it was the end of the season, and we were asking where did these guys go, and um, I think the club like gave them an apartment or something to stay together with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they went into the apartment <laughs> and like it looked like it wasn't cleaned in one year. Yeah. And they found like, you know, like, the, you know when the dishes are piled up yeah. and it's just box if, and like maggots and it was disgusting. That's that's how they were living in that season. Ah, but you know, <laughs> the guys the guys at Vascom and they were so nice, man. They tried and hide um, a lot of uh, things that these boys were doing. Um, and I understand these guys are young. Yeah, they these were, guys yeah. are young, bro. And they they have money, um, so it's just enjoy life. To, yeah, you have to weigh, <laughs> man. What what's important? And um, uh, I mean, a day before I landed in Cape Town, mm. um, I think they were booked uh, at, at some B and B. Them too. Uh, yeah, oh. Walaza, Zongo, and a few other players. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know these young guys with the Harbleys and, and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I <laughs> arrive uh, the following day. They pick me up at the airport and they're telling me, hey, Zuma, we had a huge uh, problem uh, yesterday. These mm. guys, they bend the whole carpet <laughs> at the PNP. <laughs> <laughs> So you just arrive, uh, yeah. this chi- this team uh, is giving you an opportunity, you know, to showcase your talent again. Yeah. Um, and you already knew what challenges you know, you're going to face. You know, the season hasn't right? started yet. Yeah. You're already banning the carpets <laughs> at the PNBs and all this stuff. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, so it must um, have been a colorful yeah, season. Yeah, man, yeah. yeah. But, but what a talent, man. Zongo and, uh, and Walaza. Mm. Quality, quality players. It's just uh, almost done. Um, Back then at Sundowns, you you were there, I think 2008. Uh, were they speaking about today's ambitions back then? Like, you know, when you're in the club, um, were they saying, ah, oh, we want to dominate South Africa, we want to dominate Africa? Because at the time, they weren't doing that, especially in Africa. Yeah. Um, and do you think that now that they are at that point, that they will continue to dominate? No, but it's it started way, way, way back, man. Mm. It started way back. You know, you have to pay attention to, uh, to guys, to, 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 to guys like uh, uh, Screamer when he came with that uh, shoe shine and piano. Mm. That's where this started because you you have to you have to find your 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 your, your identity first. Mm. So Sundowns wanted to play position football. Yeah. And then for years, they just went and then find uh, players who can play that type of... That's where you had guys like Barnes, uh, Papela, you had uh, guys like Fire, um, just quality players in terms of position. Mm. And then now, when you, when you have uh, someone like Patrice and you still keep your... Values. Your... your it's it's going to take off at some stage. Yeah. Now you have money, you can access uh, the elite uh, in the country in terms of this type of the game. Mm. Um, we have guys like Temba Zwane. You can surprise before that. Surprise Moriri. Mm. Uh, the list is endless. Mm. I mean, you can go uh, just... Um, just one season, you just go get Mugwena at Supersport. Mm, mm. Easy, mm. easy. You get, uh, um, what's his name from Pirates recently? Tembin Kosi Lodge. Tembin Kosi Lodge. <laughs> yeah. Easy, you know? Yeah. So you're definitely going to dominate, man. You can get quality any 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 time you want. Mm. And you have a very good identity in terms of the game, your game. Um, your game is quality, you know? So... It, it just works, man. It works, and um, I'm 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 really happy that they found that they, they were able to find someone like uh, Mr. Patrice, you know, to because I know his his love for the game. 
I don't know how much football you still watch, but uh, who do you think is the best striker in South Africa at the moment? At the moment? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know when last you watch football. Some of you guys just, you don't watch Pro Bowl after you uh, retire. At the moment, I'm... I'm do you I'm, even, did you watch AFCON? I'm not sure. I, I, I watch AFCON. Okay. But I watch AFCON. But your PSL is not so... My PSL is not... <laughs> not up to scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what did you... Okay, then what did you think of the strikers? We had uh, Mahopa and uh, Le Passa at the time. Well, I thought, uh, you know... Well, of course, our fans, they they just <laughs> say whatever they want, man. Yeah. They, they can be on your neck. Yeah. Um, but I think um, our striking department um, played very well because to get performances uh, on the midfield, you need guys who are going to work very hard up front in terms of um, being the first line of defense. Because if your strikers are not working hard enough, mm. you're not going to see your midfield. They're going to get tired very fast mm. first half but the fact uh, the fact that um, even uh, when this guy what, what's his name Mo- Mohopa, mm. when Everything. he was playing by himself mm. but he did a lot of um, uh, uh, defending in terms of covering the positions where our midfielders they don't have to run um, long distance in terms of defending which is very important yeah so the fans they don't see all those things they just want you to score goals and yeah you know the high pressing and then you, need, you still have to protect the ball for us when we win and something you did well we like position. moving into channels yeah like being that outlet on the uh, counter uh, exactly so you um, impressed with him uh, I was I was really impressed with him um, but um our midfield, our midfield, our midfield is getting there. Mm. Our midfield is getting there. We we have a quality midfield. I'm still worried about the defense and yeah. the striking department. Mm. Um, but we need to bring quality, you know, uh, before we lose this momentum. All this quality in the midfield. Man. Yeah, um, your good friend Benny. Uh, do you think that he can coach Bofana one day um, in general? You know him inside and out. Well, I've, I've said it in the newspapers, or whatever, uh, platforms. Mm. I've said it time and time again that they need, it, they, they, they need to give him a chance. His contract is expiring. They need to give though. him a chance. Yeah. I mean... Penny as a player, bro. Penny as a player was quality. Um, as a teammate, he was a very good teammate. Um, and then to prove that he's a very good teammate, look at his spell with the Orlando Pirates. Look at what happened at Pirates. When they said he was finished. Look at what happened. He brought that team together and they, they won a triple. Yeah. And... I was around that team most of the time. I saw how uh, his teammates get excited every time they see him. Yeah. Guys like Lucky Lehuati, the <laughs> captain, when he sees Ben, he just, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, guys like that, they make good coaches. What, what is it that makes them good coaches? Believe? I, I think they, they, they can always find balance, you know in terms of uh, going hard on the players and then understanding um, uh, understanding your players that you can treat these guys this way and then there's these guys that you need to be a little bit softer, you know. Mm. Um, he, he really gets that uh, because he can, uh, he can shout at you uh, and be angry because he knows what you can do uh, he knows what you are capable of doing, and um, um, and then you laugh about it, you know, after the match. Um, it's nothing personal. It's I know, I know you can do this. Yeah. So you, every time we play, you you have to come through. That's, and he's got that experience now, like you know, having coached in Manchester now and Amazulu, 
Seti. Listen, you look at even the guys that coached him. Mourinho, you know, mm. we, 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 we need to give him a chance. And I've said that time and time again. Maybe I'll bring you into the technical staff as a as assistant. Uh, I, I, I would love to see him with Quentin. I would love Quentin. to see him with Quentin, yeah. Yeah, too, but two guys that were accused of not loving this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, just to end this, I know you have a son um, and you spoke so uh, glowingly about like your father's role in, in your career. Um, you're also now busy with football and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. What's the, is there plans for him to play overseas or well, join Pirates? Jeez. Well, as soon as, I, uh, as, soon as I, I came out and said uh, I would love for him uh, to, 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 to play in Denmark, yeah. um, uh, he started focusing more in swimming. <laughs> And okay. then I was like, what's wrong with this guy? Yeah, so he's not even playing anymore. <laughs> no, he does from time to time, but mm. uh, he's, um, he's into swimming these days. He likes uh, swimming, uh, basketball as well. Mm. Um, but still, uh, still, he talks about football. Uh, talks about football uh, a lot, mm. especially when I show him his, my videos <laughs> and, and, and the games. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully he's gonna he's gonna come back. He's still young, man. He's still young. How old he's is he now? He's uh, what eleven? Yeah. I could bet we're more likely to see him in Olympic summer than uh, Bafana Bafana shirt. Yeah, that can happen. <laughs> that can happen. <laughs> Kerry, thank you, thank you for spending your time with us. Hey, it was good seeing you, it man. Super, after a very long time. Yeah, huh? it's very insightful. Yeah. I think, yeah. Hopefully it's not the last time we get to speak because there's a lot more I honestly wanted to, to no, ask you man, about. No, no, any, anytime, anytime, anytime for you, man. We can sit down and talk. Okay, guys, there you have it. He's, he's making a promise that he'll be back. Um, we've just concluded episode eight of the Better Podcast. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time. Mm-hmm.